Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this channel is all about how to make money from your art and so it's just a, basically a discussion for beginners on how to make your first sales with different projects and I primarily focus on photography, videography, and graphic design. Today's video is going to focus more on the graphic design element of things and so we're going to be going over uh, the Shutterstock contributor sort of protocol for uploading and creating vectors. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on creating icon sets. Now, I've uploaded videos on this topic before, but this is going to be a bit more refined since I've got a little bit more experience doing this sort of thing now. And uh, so hopefully I'll be able to help you avoid pitfalls, make a few more sales, and hopefully you can pick up a few tricks and we'll have some fun along the way. So we're going to jump into the computer now so I can actually show you what we're doing in Illustrator. And uh, I'll take you from the process of creating the vectors all the way to uh, exporting them and then uploading them onto Shutterstock. And hopefully we can do that in under 20 minutes because one of the videos I made before this was really long and uh, we don't need it to be that long so let's jump into the computer now all right so we've opened up Adobe Illustrator now and I'm just gonna title my project here as a tutorial tutorial and uh, I'm gonna select a certain uh, width and height for my project now if you're doing Adobe stock contributor you want to make sure that your project is between uh, 15 megapixels and 68 I believe so you will have to do the math on that but currently we're working with 18 megapixels so we're well within that threshold and I'm gonna choose a horizontal orientation for this so we're gonna go ahead and say create all right so we've got our new project artboard here and you can see kind of the goal that I'm aiming for this is one that I recently created and uploaded and it's a basic icon set and so uh, this is very linear we're just using strokes to create this sort of a thing and I'm going to explain a little bit more how we would uh, create some of the basic shapes that you see here and uh, how to do this kind of quickly and a little bit more efficiently so let's jump into our new project here and uh, we've just got our cursor here I'm just gonna go ahead and select the basic cursor that you're going to need for this now, since I said we're going to be doing mostly simple line sort of uh, vector icon sets, uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and try and create our first few basic shapes here. And so I'm going to go over into my little shape tool. And uh, what we're going to do first, let's go ahead and create a little globe. And uh, this is an icon that's used and sold fairly frequently in icon sets. And so it's useful to know how to make something like this. So generally, when you're drawing your shapes, unless you hit shift, you will start to create an ellipse. And if you want a perfect circle, which is what we'd like to have, have, we'll just hit shift and that'll give us a more direct uh, sort of object to work with so there you go we have our perfect ellipse and uh, we have our object now now one of the things about vector set now one of the things about vector sets that we need to know uh, right away is that we want to make sure that the sizing of our objects is consistent and so you can see over in here that most of my objects are sized comparably. They, not one of them is bigger than another, and uh, they all have a, a, a comparable style to the one that's sitting next to it. So we want to mimic that. We want to have consistency. We want to have strokes that are the same width. And so how we're going to go about doing that is by introducing a grid. And so we have our little object here. It's a little bit faint on the outline, so I'll change that in a second. But we're going to go ahead and select View. And then we want to say Show Grid. And this is just going to give us a little grid to work with. Uh, and we'll make sure to turn this off at the end as well. But this will just allow us to measure things a little bit more accurately. And uh, it's just going to allow us to size our objects a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit space and just kind of claw my way over here. And if you hit the space bar, it'll give you a little hand and that'll let you drag around the artboard. Very useful tool to have. So uh, let's uh, put our circle up in this corner here. And I'm going to hit control plus 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 just to zoom in a little bit better. Now let's say that we wanted to create all of our objects to be a similar size. We're going to size this down. Uh, you can use shift if you want to keep the, the perfect circle shape when you're uh, sizing it differently and you get that little uh, dual arrow in the corner and that's how we resize our shapes. And so you just hit shift to keep the object uh, the same scale as you're going up and down. And so what I want to make sure now is, uh, let's say I'm creating my little globe here. I'm going to select, uh, let's say, uh, seven of these units. So you can see these kind of faint squares here. I hope you can see those fairly well in the video. But I'm going to select one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to click on my little object here. I'm going to try and make sure that it fits within that, that little segment. So you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. I'm going to size it down just a little bit. So we're going to go down to seven. I'm just going to drag that up here. And you can also navigate your little object to get it a little bit more uh, within those perfect grid lines by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if you want to just kind of slide it around a little bit and get it so it's perfectly shaped, we'll get it fit right in there. 
So let's change that stroke uh, so that we can actually see what we're working with. And so in this corner here, we're going to have fill and we're gonna have stroke. So stroke is the outline that's surrounding it, and the fill is obviously what's contained within the limits of the perimeter of the shape you've created. So for now, we're gonna select this little option, which is the none. So this is going to turn off our fill. We're gonna go ahead and go back to our stroke, and then we're going to increase the size of our stroke, and let's say to about five pixels. And so we're gonna be able to see that a lot better now. I might even do 10 just because I'm making a video here. It might be just a little bit more more easy to see this. So this is our shape and we've mostly stuck it within these, uh, the, this range of the grid so that we're not too far out of it. I'll make sure I keep doing that just to make sure it stays in there. Uh, but we've got our shape. Now we want to create this so that it looks like the one on our previous page. We want this kind of glow icon. And basically when you're creating vectors, you're doing a lot of shape building, a lot of simple shape manipulation and building. So as you can see on this shape I had over here, maybe the first uh, thing that we want to add to our globe is the ellipse that's in the middle. So let's go ahead and create that. And you can use the shortcut L to bring up the ellipse tool, or you can go into the little shape thing here and select ellipse tool. So uh, L and M are both things that you're going to use a lot of because L is circle, M is going to be a rectangle or a square. So we're going to build with those a whole lot. So let's go ahead now and we're going to create an ellipse. There we go, and it's gonna be about the same uh, stroke as what we originally worked with. So I'm gonna drag this now so that we can center it. And I have uh, turned on my smart guides. If something's not snapping to the center of shapes and you're having a difficulty um, putting your shapes around, then one of the things you need to do is go into, um, I believe it's view, and have on uh, smart guides. So if this is not checked off, things won't snap into place and it gets kind of frustrating sometimes when you're trying to get things to line up. So just turn on your smart guides if you want things to snap to fit. So we're going to go back here now and we're going to center this. You'll see that it kind of finds its center here. There we go. And uh, that's looking all right. We might want to make it just a little bit bigger to kind of fit right in the top there. Just mess around with it a little bit. And it's fairly even too because we've created a symmetrical ellipse. Now you can do straight lines across it in two different ways. Uh, we might just want to use the pen tool for now. So what we're going to do is going to hit P, which is the shortcut, or we can just go ahead on the side tool and select the pen tool. And so what I might want to do is find my center here. Since I have my smart guides on, I can click here and then hit shift, click on the other side, and that will give me a perfectly straight line. Now you can hit V and click off of here and that will, V is your uh, selection tool. So you can go back to that and then hit P again to bring back your pen tool. Or if you want to ever break a line when you're drawing with the pen tool, you can just hit P again and that will cut your line. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this. I'm going to create another path up here. And then we want to be consistent down here. So we're going to click on the line that we've just made. We're going to drag it down here. And we got those smart guides on. So that's telling us that uh, this is going to be even. You can see those pink arrows on the side. And I'll just release it now. Oop. Sorry. To duplicate an object, I should specify, you hit Alt. And you'll get that little double arrow. And that will allow you to click on a line that you're using, drag it so you can duplicate it. And then, of course, we want those to be the same. Uh, we want to make sure that they're the same width apart so our smart guides will indicate to us that this is going to be the same distance part and then I'm just going to release it. So we have our little globe there. And as you can see on this one, I also included one line straight down the center of the object. So we're going to do that here as well. We're going to hit P, we're going to click at the top here on the circle, uh, hit shift to create a straight line and click at our other point here. And that's going to create our perfect little globe here. I think that's what was missing and why it was looking a little bit strange. So that's our first little icon and that's the first one in the set that I've created here. Now, if you want to create another one next to it, you want to make sure that the sizes are going to be consistent. And you can do this in two ways. So let's select our object here. We're going to hit, uh, let's just select the outside shell for now. We'll all group it together at the end, but for now, I just want access to this uh, circle that we're using. So I'm going to click on the stroke that is the outside circle. I'm going to hit Alt, and then we're just going to drag that. And that's going to give us uh, another circle to work with. So. One of the things I can do to make sure that all of my things are evenly spaced across is just use those guidelines of the grid. They're super handy, they're super useful for navigating your space. And then if you need to make sure that these two things line up at their centers, you can use those smart guides to, uh, to let you know when, when something's perfectly lined up. 
and maybe I want two grid spaces between these. So I'm just gonna use the arrow keys until I've perfectly navigated my circle and it seems to be in good place right there. So let's go back and take a look at what we had created here. We had a couple other little icons that were similar to my globe. Um, maybe what I wanna do is just create a simple circle with a check mark in it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hit P to create our pen tool. And we're just gonna make a simple check mark here. So we're gonna set our anchor point, hit shift, and uh, when you're making a straight line, when you're holding down shift with the pen tool, you can set your anchor points. And then if you hold down shift, it'll give you a 45 degree angle line. So that's what we want. So we're gonna set that and click. And then we're just gonna continue with our line with the pen tool and click again. So maybe this might indicate something like correct or yes or something like that. Because in general, when you're creating an icon set like this, you want them to represent something. You want to re represent maybe globalization. You might want to represent something like uh, interconnectedness. You might want to su suggest something like uh, smartphone sharing or information sharing. Or you might want to suggest something like data security. So you want to make sure that when you're creating your little icons that they have sort of concept that goes with them. And the main thing that you want to consider at the end is that they're all consistently uh, shaped, they're all consistently uh, sized. You want to make sure that if you're using a certain stroke width with everything that it is consistent across all of them. Now these are shapes that are uh, commonly uh, requested because people are looking for little basic icons that they can throw on their web pages. So you can go ahead and do that. Now uh, let's go ahead to our tutorial back here. Uh, we're not going to go ahead and create 32 of these because I don't think you'd want to watch that. So what we're going to go ahead and do instead is we're going to go through the exporting process. So I have this set ready to go. And one of the things I've also done since Shutterstock and Adobe Stock um, are visual mediums is you might want to create a little sign that says uh, what your icon set is all about. And we can do this in a really simple way. Uh, but I want to just go over that just to make sure everybody can, can make that and make their uh, make their sign a little bit more uh, marketable, let's say. So I'm going to hit M, or I'm going to go over to the shape and select the ring, rectangle tool. I'm going to go ahead and drop myself a little uh, rectangle. And uh, we're going to go ahead this time and eliminate the stroke. So we're on our side here. We're going to eliminate stroke. And we're going to fill that. Uh, let's just do black for now. Nice and clean. And then we're going to go into our text tool. So I'm going to hit T. And this is going to allow us to insert a text box. And uh, this is very, very tiny, so we need to make this a lot bigger. And we're gonna just call this uh, tutorial as well. Tutorial, I don't think you can read that. I'm gonna select it and we're gonna size it up. Let's go to 180. That's reasonably sized, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go to, uh, let's try 300. Perfect, okay, we're gonna go ahead with, uh, with that and use that as our sign. So I'm gonna go back here, get my selection tool, just click outside of that. Now something about text you need to know is that it cannot remain just simply like this. It cannot just be text. When you're working with type, you need to create outlines for each of the, each of the letters, and this is gonna actually transform it into a vector object. It currently is not, so we need to make sure that we transform this into a vector object so that we're not gonna get any issues when we upload. So we're gonna go ahead into the type menu here when we have tutorial selected, and we're gonna go into type all the way down to create outlines, and that's gonna create our little outline for this. So each one of these is now a vector object, and we can slide this around like we would otherwise, and it's gonna be a small little contained unit. Now, if you wanna get all super crazy with this and you want it to be uh, really designy, you could ungroup these objects and use them independently, and I would do that by going shift control G and then all of my letters are going to be moving around independently now. So maybe I wanna to go tutorial and have a little bit more of an aesthetic to it, but I do not want to do that, so I'm just gonna go control Z, put it back into place, but that will allow you to manipulate letters independently, and it's not gonna give you any issues when you go ahead and try to upload this onto Shutterstock. So we've kind of, uh, let's say we've concluded what we were doing. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go into file, and then we're gonna go save as, because we need to save this as a specific thing. So we're gonna to need to save this to, I'm gonna save it to my desktop, desktop as tutorial. And I'm not gonna save it as an AI file. I'm not gonna save it as an Adobe Illustrator file because maybe somebody's using a different program. We're gonna to need to save this as an EPS document. So we're gonna select EPS, we're gonna hit save, 
and it's gonna bring up this little menu for us. We can't save it just as a CC EPS because that doesn't work with everybody's platform. Now I've had the, a little bit of an issue selecting uh, Illustrator 10 and 9 before. These should technically work on Shutterstock, but they don't always. So let's go with the one that we've had the most success with and select Illustrator 8 EPS, which is gonna work on the most platforms and it's going to be a better system to upload with. So I've got that selected and I'm just going to hit Okay. All right, so the next place that we want to be is in the upload part of Shutterstock Contributor. If you've set up your web page, we'll be able to upload right to here. So we are going to go ahead and uh, select multiple files. This will just allow us to go into our desktop, select the tutorial, hit open, and it will upload our file here, which is great. And if you're successful, it'll just show you an image of what you were working with. So I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you're having some fun making some vectors for Shutterstock. I'm still basically learning how to create icon sets and just other things that are marketable and sellable. And so I'm just developing my skill set on a daily basis. And uh, I'll pass on the knowledge that I learn as I work on things. And hopefully you'll find it illuminating as well. So thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you are interested in more content like this, by all means, subscribe and uh, have a great week.